First question I would like to ask you though, how is that, especially um, at that point in your career, to have that kind of adoration? Like, and it was a global success, so. It well, it was a rush. I mean, on I mean, just to be the first to be the the female lead, and then to be like the apple of you know people's eyes, and then and then have it kind of go on from there also. Yeah. But but I mean, it was you know it was a huge compliment. <laughs> it was a huge compliment. So I was like, okay, I, you know, this is great because you know honestly, the truth is is that. What I think is even the, the, whole, the whole point of the movie is that like all of us are nerds inside, just right. as Betty was, just as I am, and everybody has a part of them that we feel isn't, mm -hmm. isn't like it's the way it's supposed to be in whatever version that is. And, and I felt that exact same way. So I was secretly <laughs> like, oh my God, I've been cast as the cheerleader, got everything together, supposedly. Roll, and I'm like, okay, so, <laughs> I'll so do the go with that. That wasn't the real you? Like I mean, I, like, not in my mind, not at all. So how did you? I, I was never a cheerleader. Oh, okay. I was never, I was never a click sorority girl. I literally went to um, sororities in Tucson when, when we went up. To, we had some rehearsal time, which was fun, right. and and you know, kind of hung out with the girls and got my little sorority pin and did stuff to you know. But I'm not like a click girl. Right. And and usually, not always, because my daughter is a sorority girl, but her sorority happens to to. Um, highlight women's philanthropies, but that's now, and this mm. is we're talking about then. <laughs> kind of different. So um, anyway, not to say there's anything wrong with the sororities, mm. but it just as far as like a friend group, that wasn't at all me. Like that wasn't right. my thing. I always fit in in high school with the theater kids, um, I, we didn't call them nerds, but like people, <laughs> but people that were like smart and, and, and unique and individual. Mm. Like I didn't fit in, perfectly to any one group, but I liked, I liked being a part of all the groups. Everybody. So, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> can you talk a little bit about, because we talked about when Revenge of the Nerds first came out, we're talking early 80s now. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the difference then to now, like 2019? Is it like, obviously this movie, oh this movie could be made in 2019, but it couldn't be made the same. No, it couldn't. <laughs> I'd be in, I'm in big trouble right. in this movie with that. <laughs> For that, yeah, 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 no. Yeah. It couldn't be. And I guess there's something to be said. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good to that. Mm -hmm. But yet, yeah, these were just raucous comedies. But ours, in the case, did have a heart and have, like, meaning. And I always felt, mm -hmm. like, great that my, my character was the character who actually made that transformation and was sort of the symbol of... You know, go, with, go with the nerds because the nerds are, you know, they're more well-rounded people, right? They have skills, they're nice. And they're, they're gonna run the world one day. And they're gonna run the world. Get with it, Betty. <laughs> you know, Stan, gorgeous, cute, and later comes out in one of the other movies as a nerd. He came out that he was a nerd, but he wasn't showing that. I don't think he wasn't very nice to me. In, right, in right, the, the movie. movie. <laughs> in the movie. So, and Lewis, you know, just kept on, um, what would the word be? Just approaching me and being relentless. cute and being funny and being sweet. He was relentless. Yeah. So oh, it's kind of hard to talk about the scene that we're all thinking of because it's like, what do you say? <laughs> I mean, I don't I, know. It was a surprise. You guys had the, uh, <laughs> you guys did American Pie, the pie scene before they did. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. Which, uh, if anyone's seen American Pie, I'm sure you know. <laughs> Now, um, of course, uh, like I said, there's, there's a big difference between uh, then and now. Right. But for you, when you're looking at movies now, what, how, how do you uh, watch them? Like, when you're looking at them, is, is there a part of you that looks and says, yeah, this is great, but it just doesn't have that feel? Or, or, do you, or have you oh. gone with the evolution? Well... Well, that was a whole, we were in a whole genre of right. great movies that were just so much fun. I mean, is it right for the little, for the little nerd, any guys to be video? No, <laughs> no, it's not right. It's not right. But right. did it happen? Well, I guess so in different variations. Obviously, it's part, it's kind of the part of growing up, I guess, mm -hmm. that we actually we saw in the movie was, you know, these were pranks, <laughs> not all good pranks. <laughs> 
but, you know, I mean, it was sort of like being behind the scenes in the boy, with the boys. And so, so anyway, yeah, there's nothing like that generation right. of movies. And you hear that all the time, how movies were so much fun. Um, everyone had so much fun during them and they were so much fun to watch. And we weren't really thinking ex at all the way we were now. Maybe there was a little thinking about it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same right. thing. And so in that way, it was just a, um, a, not a gentler generation, that sounds stupid, but <laughs> like, a, I don't know, um, it was just fun. Yeah. And it was sort of like boys and girls, and this is what they're all secretly wanting, and <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say movies are the same. I guess that's, I guess that's fine. Luckily, some, some shows, like Revenge of the Nerds, are still hits. Right. Timeless. <laughs> timeless, timeless fun, and, right. and a great story. You know, unlike some of the other, you know, movies that were college, mm. college rock and stuff like that, it was also that it did have meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I think that's why it touched. I think that's why we have a following. I haven't heard, I mean, my gosh, there's a lot of great acting and a lot of fun movies, Animal Hunts. Porky's. 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 Like, I don't, and there was I no don't, really following yeah, for it. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I may, I may be unaware, but I didn't, I'm not aware of any particular following, uh -huh. yet our movie did because we were actually talking about like from the inside out stuff. Right. You and know? you guys did something that we had never really seen before either, and we highlighted and made the protagonist of these movies the nerds, like the right. the, uh, the lower cast, the, you right. know, uh, the of society. Yeah. Exactly. And I love being, I always, I love being for the underdogs. <laughs> right. I do, I do. The and this is, is what so you have these folks greater. here. That's right. The win is so much greater with uh, the challenge. Now, um, we are going to open up the floor to questions if okay. anyone uh, wants to ask a question at all. Anybody at all, but I will let, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why would you ask that? <laughs> Have you ever heard any other stories from any other actors? Yeah, usually I'm here with my other yeah. castmates. So it's actually, it's kind of fun. Not, but it's always really fun having, being with them together. We, this, this, uh, my, my contact is moving. I don't know. Um, this cast from day one when we met in, in Tucson and, and the director and the producers were smart enough to have us get come up a couple weeks early and, and rehearse. We, we just bonded right. immediately. It's very actually unusual. There wasn't like a problem ever on the set with anyone, but we all bonded and we, I went with the, I went immediately with the nerds just without thinking. I was just, this was just like a friend thing. Like, who am I gonna hang out with? We're up in Tucson for like six weeks or whatever, two months or whatever it was. For me, it was Curtis Armstrong. <laughs> Call me silly. I <laughs> just, you know, we, we became so tight friends and you know there was some evolution from there but I we and we were part of the nerds so like all of Brian Tochi um Anthony 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 was around but I don't remember him partying we did a lot of partying it was the <laughs> 80s but Brian Larry yes. Larry's whole thing is you know he was so funny because he he played his character so well and He's totally pro-gay and everything, but he's not gay. So he would always, at any of these events, he'd be like, first thing he says, is, I want everyone to know I'm not gay. Because he wanted girls. Well, they got plenty of girls in Arizona. Plenty. And Don, and Don Gibb, okay, there's a jock, but they, all the boys, all the, most of the boys, not all the boys, were definitely having a great Good time. time. Kind of like the movie. Right. <laughs> and and the, also, the other fun thing about our movie was that so much of it was improv. Like the script really? itself, yeah. Even though we, even though Jeff, Jeff and, and Steve, who were the writers of, of the first one and the last one, the four, which is okay. cute. Um, but none of them is good, of course, as the first. That's, <laughs> right. that's always the way it goes. It's, it's a no brainer. But um, they were very open to us improving. And so a lot of the stuff that you saw had, had very little to do from the page. It just sort of bounced off the page. And then there was a lot of rehearsal and stuff. We had a wonderful director named Jeff Canoe who mm. totally encouraged us and was like, oh, that's funny. Or then he called me one day, like I'd finished on the set and I was wrapped and I'd always sort of be like, oh, I'm wrapped. I have to go home to the hotel room and wait for the, my nerds to come home. <laughs> that literally, that's what I'd be doing. So I get home to the hotel room and if the 
production assistant calls me, hey, Julia, Jeff wants to know, Julia, I was Julie back in the day, same, same, same thing, but uh, do you, would you come back to the set? He has an idea. And I'm like, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm like, I'm there, you know, so that was, one of the scenes for that was just a little moment, but it was so much fun when um, I come out of the, the balcony of the sorority house and Lewis is, you know, obviously set like on the street or whatever, and he's like, I love you when you're mad. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, oh, tie hair toss. And I marched back into the sorority house. That was like just one of my improv moments. The other one was walking down the hall before the shower scene uh, <laughs> and singing uh, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, E I E I O. And I'm just kind of, that was totally made up. So much fun. He's like, okay, Julie, this is what I want you to do. And I'm like, okay, good, go. <laughs> And like it was just yeah. so. The, every day was like that. Every day was like that on the set. Now back then, there wasn't too many directors that you heard of that were that yeah. willing to let you. Mm -hmm. And never mind a director, the screenwriters. Yes, that exactly. were, were to say, yeah, just screw yeah. on, I just say what you want to totally. say. Totally. Yeah, that's. And also making up bits, like a lot of the stuff that you saw the nerds do, like Curtis and uh, Takashi playing the card game in the mm -hmm. gym. Totally, completely from them. N in no way was that written in the script. Then that thing um, where Curtis is is like talking through the, not talking through, but the mailbox slot. Right. Completely made up. One of the producers was on the other side being the angry man in the house, you know, with the voice. That was completely improv. I mean, there was wow. like all kinds of fun things going on that, that just made it just a blast. In addition to the fact that mm. oddly, we all just loved each other. Right. Like it was, it was crazy. It was, it was, it was unusual. Yeah, I was gonna say because you said no that something doesn't happen very it often. It really doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. I would have loved it. Michelle Mayrink, she's really fun, but she's very much, excuse me, kind of a uh, like a hermit. So like okay. she would, she would go back to her hotel room and and hang out. And she had also her boyfriend would come up to, was up in town, so they were together. But. You know, she doesn't do these events. I would love to see her at these events. Right. I mean, she's so talented. They, they were so good together, her right. and Anthony Edwards. And, and she's so fun, but it's just, she's just much more quiet into herself right. person. Which makes sense, being with the, but I mean the character with their glasses together on the bed. Oh my God, they're so, so cute and so fun. Well, to piggyback off of his question there, uh, oh, talking, yeah. about, uh, talking about Partying. pranks that happen on set and partying. <laughs> Do you remember, uh, like in the movie itself, there were so many pranks done in the movie. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite prank in the movie? Oh, wait a minute. What pranks? Let's think about these pranks. Mm. I didn't do any prank. Well, I did do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know what my favorite prank was. <laughs> put you on the... I come with the tough questions, folks. Suddenly That's right. nervous. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, well, let me think of all the pranks I did. Okay. Uh, what pranks are you thinking of, that just out of curiosity, whether or not I. I... I mean, honestly, anything. There was, a, the, the, I mean, a litany the of the, the moon. The mooning. Yeah. Oh, that. yeah. The moon was probably that. The mooning's probably did the best one on. Yeah. Did we really do that? Like, I can't remember. There wasn't really bear. Did you, I, I didn't. I, mean, I, didn't I, do a bear I remember play. it there being bear. Yeah. Must have been. Wasn't it shaded out or like? I have no idea. Like, I didn't show my derriere. Like, I showed mine in the underwear right. on the bed. That right. was a moment that, anyway, <laughs> supposedly my director said the stills, because they always take stills when you're shooting or at times. This was another huge compliment. I may be blushing because it was like, he said to me, that photo of me sleeping on the bed with my that cute purple underwear was like, he said he had to keep it under lock and key. And I'm like, really? <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Honestly, I right was, there, right there is the difference between 1980s and 2019. Right there is the difference. Well, I wasn't naked either, <laughs> which you know, but but anyway. That's amazing. Uh, do we have any more questions? No, we didn't. We we didn't. None of us. None of us did. We we thought well. Well, I thought, hey, I'm thrilled. I'm the lead in the movie. I'd just gotten to California from New York, so I was like, yeah, of course I want to do that. But a lot of the guys, like, if they were here, they would tell you, or if you had met them before, they're like, oh, Revenge of the Nerds, oh, my God. Okay, how much does it pay? <laughs> okay, it's a check. It's better than not working. <laughs> and then it became, became what it was. It really started with the mm. rehearsal. It just started with us meeting, and, and it started with Jeff Canoe, the director, who's just... He's such a funny guy, and he's so 
open and he kind of doesn't care. Like at one point early on in the shooting, about two weeks in, word came down from Fox that they were going to shut us down because they didn't think we were funny. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what's worse than be telling you're not funny because it's hard to be funny and you're not supposed to try to be funny. So anyway, that's all very complicated. But so Jeff was like, we had this, he brought us all to this big dinner and said, you know, we've got to like pull together even more. I know we're, we had already been rehearsing and click, we, we didn't really get it. But um, so somehow we, you know, we stayed on, we stayed on shooting and like, Fox didn't treat it like what it's become. Right. They didn't treat it that way at all. They they didn't advertise it well. You know, there's a lot of things that, that but yet here we are. Right. <laughs> We're still happy to be talking about it. And, and that does sound and, like the and, one thing that hasn't changed since tw uh, 1980s and, is Fox is still the same. <laughs> good point. And the other thing is that literally we're all of our our whole cast is actually still friends, completely friends to, to this day. I mean, whenever we come to do these events or when we're in LA, and if any of you have read Curtis's book, it's so, it's so good and so funny. It's also on Audible, not that I'm not his publicity person, but <laughs> I both, he gave me, of course, a copy of the book, and then I thought, well, I'll, I, wanna, I wanna hear it too because I wanted to actually hear his voice. Even though when I was reading the book, I could literally hear him say, talking. Yeah. It was so well written. He's so talented. Really? Wow. Yeah, but we are all really close. Like I hang out with Brian Tochi, and we, we all hang out together. Oh, that's Robert, amazing. Bobby Carradine, you know. Yeah, We've, we had the, the just, chance to meet them just, last year. We're just Great big, goofy people. friends. I mean, it's so, it's crazy, you know. Now, now <laughs> have you gotten a chance to work with them again afterwards? Like, uh, I mean, outside I of, did work of with of Curtis on a, it was random. I worked on, it was a, it was a, a film that, that didn't actually go anywhere, and I, I just, I played his therapist, and um, I, the, the movie, I, don't even, I didn't even, I don't think I saw the whole thing. But it was probably a bad move. <laughs> but, but we found each other on the set together, you know, right. so that was fun. Um, I, for a long time there, like, really, I couldn't work with Bobby again because we were so known, even though, even though this movie was sort of a, a sleeper or a creeper or whatever the right sleeper, yeah. yeah, sleeper hit, still we were put, you know, People would see; they wouldn't believe us together in and a something different. Else. It just wouldn't work, because that was and that was kind of too bad. But but maybe now we could maybe yeah. do it. <laughs> I think so it's time. I'd totally be willing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, you uh, you had one in the back oh. here, and I'll come right to you. You sure? Okay, go ahead. Then. I guess my question would be: if You are kind of off the topic. Are you involved in any charities that really have like a? Um, I'm involved with some um, dog rescue places. My dog, my dog of 14 years, it doesn't matter, I guess, how long they live, you still feel the same way, <laughs> um, died. And I wanted to just, um, she just died in April. And so I just wanted to put some energy towards all the dogs. She wasn't a, um, I didn't, dog. she wasn't a rescue. I didn't adopt her, but it was just seeing and knowing all these animals out there just aren't, you know, wanting, wanting a home. So I have been doing that. Um, and I've done other things over the years. Um, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's a great cause. I'm sorry to hear about you now. Thank you. No problem. Um, you had one in the back there. Oh, it was so fun. <laughs> it was so fun. It was also a little bizarre for me. Kind of this fits with, I guess, the theme of what I'm saying and how silly I am and kooky and ridiculous and off base. But, so I went in for the audition and um, for the initial audition where you just read in the beginning for the casting director, a woman named Susan Arnold. And I, I, I guess I'd auditioned for her before. So the script, again, very minimal, especially, you know, and this is one problem with the 80s. I mean, women, we have like three words, you know, in the script. It's really insulting. So you have to, so it's like, let me do something with these three words and then those two words there and then whatever. But anyway, so I read through this script. I mean, I did my audition and she's like, great, I'm going to have you come back and I want you to do it exactly like that. And I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> I, I'll do that. But it was so, and so then I met the director, Jeff Canoe, and he's like, I think he may have like, he just loved, you could feel that he loved what I did. And I was just literally thinking, kind of what I've said to you guys, the basis of my character, you know, like, I, I'm offended because this nerd is approaching me and my whole thing is how I am, have been groomed or groomed myself to be or whatever combination 
you know, the cheerleader and the, I'm dating the most handsome jock, blah, 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 blah. and it's all supposed to be like this. So when Lewis comes along, I'm like, well, this doesn't fit the picture. I can't be okay with him. But over time, he just creeps in. He creeps in. But anyway, so Jeff Canoe, as, as I go off topic, then, uh, so, but Jeff Canoe in the, in the, um, in the process was um, in the callbacks, of course, and he didn't really either give me any big notes, which was almost like upsetting to me because I love to be directed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, seems to be really liking what I'm doing. And then we went to a screen test situation and he was on the other side of the camera and it was like being in, seven, in heaven, like, cause he was playing the other role and it was just like magic. Right. It, it, working with him, I was just like, I know I'm in good hands and this is really fun. Um, so it's just sort of, um, it was a great. It was a great experience. It was almost easier than I wanted. Is kind of what I'm trying to say. I was like, I didn't quite understand because I didn't really mm -hmm. feel like I was the character that they seemed to think I was perfect for. Right. With this, and you know, I I've never been a cheerleader. You wouldn't want me to be a cheer like I did play a cheerleader <laughs> in a few movies, not just this one, and I got a knee injury. <laughs> That is commitment so, to character right it there. It was commitment, and again, I'm, I'm not, I've never been a cheerleader. But anyway, so, um, yeah, the audition process. Who had asked that question? Where is that person? There you are. The audition process was really fun. I owe it to, I guess, some sort of unknown <laughs> part of myself. And then to Jeff Canoe, who's just so relaxing and fun to be around. And he's so he so gives you things. He's so good with actors. He's just very relaxing and... And so it was exciting. I thought it was exciting. I never thought, oh, do I want to do this? Like all my boy co-stars. I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> now, you talked you talk a lot about Jeff Canoe and uh, about the influence he had over you, especially in this movie. Now, it seems you, the two of you had a, a very strong rapport. Like yeah. you guys like gelled like right off the bat we from did. day one. Did it seem that way with him and the rest of the cast as well? Or is it something you found maybe was... Did, like, I did have a crush on him. I did have a crush on. <laughs> ultimately, I did have a crush on him, but it didn't. Nothing. Nothing at all right. happened with it. Like he, we wasn't. That was nothing to do with. But I did secretly kind of became a crush that I had on him. But I didn't really tell him anything about that. <laughs> You're hearing it now, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not surprised. No. <laughs> but um, but um, I just think he knows people. He knows right. actors. He knows how to relax them. I think he's just gifted. I think, I think he chose me because he felt he knew I had whatever he wanted in this, as well as the other people. And I, all the cast members were so, all, all of them so talented. Right. But he was able to bring that out in us. Like in the screen test, I just remember feeling like I was glowing. And I was like, thank God. Because screen, anything, these auditions can mm. go completely the other way with even the best made plans. Right. So, <laughs> Anyway. Now, did you feel you had this after your audition? Because it sounds like you had a really good audition. I knew I had it at the screen test, right. for sure. I don't even remember who the other girls were in the room. Not that I, I'm, you know, it's been quite a while now, but I really don't even remember who else was around. Um, and maybe he did it, maybe he scheduled it that way. I don't know if there were like two or three others or 15 or... Or just you. Or just me. No, it wasn't just me, but, but, but anyway, yeah. Amazing. Um, do we have any other questions there, folks? Right up front. So walk around the con, you see like a lot of movie memorabilia, you know, figures, comics. Is there anything that you like collecting, whether it's Comic-Con related or, or just a hobby that you have that you, uh, you enjoy? It's funny. I'm not really a collector um, in that way. I'm more of a... Um, <laughs> I realize that I should be more of a... I've started to be more of a collector of myself. I would love to have some stuff that would be silly and obscure to... To, to, to anyone but me or my, you know, like the first commercials I did back in New York and film from the soap opera I did, When Life to Live, for many years. Um, I, think, you know, I think that exists somewhere in like the beta or whatever those huge things are we used to all have. Um, so I can't think of anything that I'm an actual collector of right now. Just focusing on collecting only good people in my life. I'm just... <laughs> And some Just good in memories. the beginning of a divorce, a happy divorce. Yes! Well, <laughs> I'm free! 
Yeah. Is there such a is there such a thing as a sad divorce? Well, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what side I you're had on. I, guess. I had my sadness with it. Right. I had my sadness, but that is not now. That was then. Amazing, and we're happy to hear that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Do we have another? Ah, oh, there you go, Superman. Oh, no, not Superman, sorry. I thought you had a Superman shirt on there. <laughs> Clark Kent, Clark Kent. Right. Can you talk about your time building the movie Milk Money? Oh, my oh. God. I was just I was struck because I'm like, I'm a big Revenge of the Nerds fan, but I'm like, gosh, I know I've seen it in something else, and I had to rack my brain for a bit what well, that was. I'm kind of impressed. It was a coming of age movie for me. I love that movie. I'm coming of age when it was, you know. Well, I really wasn't on the set for very long because literally all I had was that one, one little scene. I did happen to witness, uh, I hope, uh, you know, we'll keep this between us. <laughs> um, but, but Ed Harris and Melanie Griffith had amazing chemistry, amazing. Wow. And they were making out before every scene. I was like, that poor makeup... You know, I'm always, I'm always like, always needing more lip gloss. I'm, but I'm not like making out <laughs> right. before each scene with, maybe I would after if that were the case. <laughs> but they were um, so hot. <laughs> I was like, woo, let's just watch before you hit roll them on that one. But, and, and of course to work with Richard Benjamin, but I really had very little to do because I was just the mom and that was the one scene um, that I was in. Awesome. Great question. Great question. Yeah, uh, anybody good, else? Good, like, <laughs> good me I mean, you know, good memory. The details. Uh, anyone else? What advice would you give yourself back then? Like, good question. Like, as a mm. female lead in a movie, like, what advice would you give yourself back then? There was something that I did want, which I wanted more rehearsal. Like, they gave, gave a lot of rehearsal to, and I, and I love Jeff, as it's clear, but there was a lot of rehearsal for the nerds, the boys, right? And I had to, did my own stuff, as I was saying with the sorority, you know, I was doing my own stuff to help me as an actress, but I would have definitely said to me, ask for a rehearsal for the moon bounce thing, because that was, even then, that scene still needed another beat. The beat of, you know, in actor terms, the beat, the moment of, um, it's you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I didn't think these skills were stands, but it's you. <laughs> like it needed, it. Ne you know, had we been able to, we, which there wouldn't have been any reason we couldn't have. But I didn't ask for it. In in that way, I was I was young to Los Angeles. I was working with Bobby, who'd done a lot of movies and is from you know acting family. So I was sort of like, whoa, and. I was still pretty nervous about those, anything that was sexual or, you know, related. So uh, that kind of um, naivete or whatever, I would definitely say to someone else or to me, you know, ask for rehearsals on this, uh, suggest something. Like, don't be, don't be quiet. Just almost like a good note to any girl, not to be, you know, but, you know, ask if something feels like, oh, could this use something more, or is this, is this all this scene should be? If it maybe you think, I'm not sure it is, then ask and fool around with it. Like he would have. I don't know why Jeff didn't. And I don't, I, I've, with humor, I blame him and like GQ magazine, all these different things, like it's Jeff's fault. <laughs> but, but that's a good, that's a really good question. Amazing. Thought I saw another one over there, but no, we're good right now. All right, so we, we, you talked a little bit earlier, and this is kind of something I, I would like to get in with you as yeah. well. Um, back then you said, you know, uh, and it was everything we saw in all 80s movies, Kelly right. LeBrock and Weird Science, you right. know. You get the sex symbol up there who's got, you know. And she was probably one of the females out there that you, in movies that had a lot of lines and still right. wasn't all that many lines. When you, look yeah. at, when you look at yesteryear compared to today, do you feel uh, women are at the spot where they deserve to be, or is there still a lot of work to go? Well, I think it's such a nice difference from where it was that, we're, of course, there's ways to go, but you, you're seeing, you're seeing a, lot, a lot of good now. I mean, mm. I think now it's, it's, it's being put out there in all kinds of ways. I think it's, it's well time you know, for all that to happen. Right. And, I mean, my God, we, we women have plenty to say. We all know that. <laughs> for better and for worse. 
I have yeah. no comment. Yeah, I bet. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> totally um, understand. Amazing. Uh, anyone else? All right. Pretty good. Pretty fun. Pretty. Thank uh, you so much. Thanks yeah. for coming. Thank you. This was amazing of you guys. Uh, how about just giving a nice round of applause for Julia? And a round of applause to yourself. Some great questions out there today, guys.